Welcome back to the Chad Eastie Show on News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM KFYO as we broadcast from the Culligan Water Studios. Better water, pure and simple. It is a big day as uh, the special session has now officially wrapped up down in Austin. And we visit right now with the governor of the great state of Texas, Governor Greg Abbott. Governor, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Chad. Great to visit with you again. Well, uh, before we get into uh, the the special session, I want to say uh, congratulations to you and your wife. I understand uh, y'all celebrated 36 uh, years of uh, wedded bliss uh, yesterday. Yesterday was our anniversary, and it felt like uh, the very first anniversary that we had. And I'm blessed to have such a wonderful wife. Uh, and uh, and so we had a, a great uh, anniversary, although for me, it was mostly a working anniversary because I didn't get home until about uh, 9 or 10 o'clock at night. Well, hopefully you didn't get in too much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, after 36 years, she's come to realize what this entails. Uh, very good. Governor, uh, we'll just hop right into it. Uh, obviously, yesterday you had the uh, the House adjourn early uh, in the day, a day early, you had the Senate, uh, which last night they didn't seem like they wanted uh, to adjourn, but they, they did uh, did adjourn. Uh, you had some Texas lawmakers who have asked you already to call for a uh, second special session to address SB1. You did get about, uh, what, nine or ten of your uh, special session items uh, through the legislature uh, but SB1, property tax reform, did not get through. You also pair that with the news yesterday that a three-judge panel is now ordering the state uh, to redraw two congressional districts. So I'll put it this way. Are we going to see a second special session? Well, for, I mean, we've we got to bifurcate these and talk about them separately. So let me give you two answers. The, the first on the property tax issue, uh, as you will recall, uh, property taxes was my top issue. We have to have property tax reform in the state of Texas because too many Texans are being taxed out of their homes. And that's especially our seniors who uh, feel like they've paid off their mortgage, but it's difficult for them to even stay in their home because of the rising property taxes. And so I think it is irresponsible for the legislature to uh, have ended this session uh, without addressing the property taxes uh, that our fellow Texans desperately need to have uh, constrained, reformed, and reduced. Uh, in, in that regard, listen, all options are always going to be on, on the table with regard to calling another special session. Uh, a special session is going to be appropriate uh, if we can get something done. Uh, otherwise, it would just be nothing more than a waste of millions of taxpayer dollars. Uh, right now, uh, on property taxes, as well as on some of these other items that did not get passed, there is a deep divide between the House and Senate on these important issues. The, the stalemate on property taxes... Uh, did not occur on the last day of the session. That stalemate uh, between the House and Senate and what I wanted to achieve on property taxes it was something that permeated the entire 30-day session or 29-day session. And what we need to do right now is we need for these representatives to go back home to their districts. Uh, they need to go to town halls. They need to visit with their constituents. They need to hear from their constituents about the pressing demand for property tax reform, and they either need to be prepared uh, to come back uh, and support uh, the proposal that I was pushing, which is uh, the, the 4% uh, rollback, uh, or they need to come up with a better idea. But, Chad, remember, that's precisely what I said when I called for the special session to begin with, and that is either provide me the 4% rollback or provide me a better idea, and the House did neither on those two. And so right now uh, there is, is non-movement between the House and Senate on solving uh, the desperate need for property taxes in Texas. On the second issue that you mentioned, and, and that is uh, for your listeners, what happened late yesterday, uh, there was a, a three-judge panel in San Antonio that issued a decision uh, on redistricting for congressional districts in the state of Texas. And this is a panel, by the way, uh, that's been, been working on this decision for two and a half years. And after two and a half years, uh, they come out late on a day and say, well, we got three business days uh, to get them an answer about whether or not we're going to call a special session to address this issue, uh, which is astonishing uh, in and of itself. Uh, but it, it, here's the context of it, and that is the panel that issued this decision late yesterday is the same panel that issued a decision back in 2012 concerning these very same districts. 
That happened when I was the attorney general of the state of Texas, and I knew they were wrong when they issued that decision back in 2012. I appealed it to the United States Supreme Court and won unanimously. Think about this. Even the Barack Obama-appointed liberal justices on the United States Supreme Court said that what this three-judge panel in San Antonio ruled when they said that Texas was wrong in passing these redistricting lines, uh, they got overturned by the United States Supreme Court. And I can tell you uh, from my quick analysis of what uh, was issued yesterday by this three-judge panel, they're wrong again because they are, they are sticking to their erroneous legal analysis that they applied in the last decision. And so what we know is this, and that is uh, we are going to be appealing this once again to the United States Supreme Court. And I feel very confident that once again the United States Supreme Court is going to overturn this misguided decision by the lower court. Governor, I'm I'm reading uh, from uh, our, our good friend Patrick Svitek's uh, Twitter account uh, from the Texas Tribune, and uh, in an earlier interview, uh, and, and we're going back here to uh, to the special session. Uh, in an earlier interview, uh, there there was talk about the bathroom bill. And uh, you had said in a previous interview that the speaker, uh, Speaker Joe Strauss, had made it clear to you that he opposed the bill and that he would never allow a vote to be taken on it on the floor. Uh, you pair this with your obvious disappointment on property tax reform, and I think it's not only your your disappointment. Uh, the lieutenant governor expressed a lot of disappointment uh, yesterday. In fact, he was quoted uh, saying that uh, the, uh, the the speaker treated your agenda like horse manure. Is the speaker to blame for property tax reform and for the bathroom bill and for some of the other items that did not uh, get voted out? Is he responsible for the death of those bills? Sure. And listen, this is very easy to, to explain. Uh, as you just said, the speaker made it very clear to me personally uh, that he opposed uh, the, the privacy bill, and he said he would never allow it to be voted on. He told me that during the regular session. He told me that during the special session, but he also said it publicly uh, during the special session. Uh, and, and there's absolutely no evidence he will ever change his mind on this issue. Uh, and and it's, it's disappointing because, listen, there was an opportunity to provide the, the certainty uh, that's desperately needed, especially uh, by our schools and by parents. And, and but, but he has been abundantly clear uh, that he is never going to allow a vote uh, to be taken on this issue, which is exactly why you saw it got bottled up uh, in committee. But it doesn't stop there because uh, th there were so many other items that I had on this special session uh, agenda call, uh, such as uh, school choice for special needs students, such as in this this next one is so very important uh, as it concerns the state of Texas governance. Uh, I had on the special session call spending limits for state government and then separately for local governments. Texas is a state that historically has been very responsible about containing spending. This was a no-brainer, especially at the state level. Uh, and this passed out of the Texas Senate uh, in, in just a matter of days. We should have passed that. Uh, we should have passed further regulatory reforms. Uh, we should have passed reforms with, with regard to union dues. All of these are items that never got even called up for a vote on the House floor. At, at a minimum, what is needed and what is deserved uh, by constituents, by the citizens of the state of Texas, uh, is to have their members in the Texas House cast a vote, an up or down vote on these issues uh, so that their voters, uh, their constituents, our fellow Texans get to decide if they want to retain or replace these House members. Governor, when you look at your agenda and you look at, which I believe is a conservative agenda, can your agenda, a conservative agenda, get through, whether it be a special session or the next, legislat uh, next legislative session, can your agenda get through if Joe Strauss remains Speaker of the House? On these issues that I talked about, such as uh, having real constraints uh, on budget, obviously uh, that would not get through uh, as it concerns issues such as uh, the privacy issue or uh, the, the type of uh, education reforms that I want to see done. They're not going to get through. Now, th there were some conservative reforms that we need to acknowledge were passed. Uh, th there were uh, 10 items uh, on my agenda uh, that the Texas House did pass. Uh, one was cracking down on mail ballot fraud. That is a very real reform that needed to be passed. Uh, there were reduced regulations on homeowners, such as uh, the reforms on the annexation practice. 
things like that were very much needed, and I appreciate the fact that both the House and Senate were able to come together and pass those reforms. However, uh, if, if we are going to, to ensure that Texas remains the model uh, for governance in the United States of America, we must always be passing laws that constrain spending, uh, that reduce regulations. Uh, it's those two uh, principles, uh, as, as well as cutting taxes, uh, that continue to attract uh, and expand uh, the Texas economic environment. So uh, we, we've got to either uh, make sure we have the, the current speaker uh, support those principles, uh, or we've got to get the votes in the House to make sure we're going to get those principles passed. Uh, Governor, before I let you go, uh, th- there was uh, something interesting brought up last night in the Senate, and it was uh, from uh, uh, Senator uh, Whitmire, I believe. Uh, and he brought up uh, sunset, and this may be into the future, a sunset rule for school districts. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's, it's a component of a larger picture of something that did pass. One of the items on my agenda was to have uh, a school finance reform commission. And here's the deal. Uh, the way that we both finance schools in the state of Texas uh, and the architectural structure of the way that education is delivered in the state of Texas are both flawed both must be modified. We need some real solutions for it, which is exactly why we passed uh, this commission so that it could be studied for the next year and a half so that when we go into the next regular session, we will have real solutions that could overhaul and improve the way that we provide education in the state of Texas. And I believe that all possible angles and solutions must be on the table if we are going to improve our education system in the state of Texas. Governor, before I let you go, overall, were you satisfied or disappointed with this special session? Well, I, mean, I hate to say it, but the, the answer is both. Uh, I'm, I'm satisfied that 10 of the items that I, was, uh, uh, that I put on the special session agenda uh, did get passed, but I'm also disappointed that uh, some of the very important ones did not get passed, such as uh, reducing or reforming property taxes, such as uh, putting constraints on spending limits uh, to make sure that we live uh, with very responsible budgets. And so uh, there, there are some items that didn't get passed that uh, I really wanted to get passed, but I am pleased that we did pass uh, 10 items, especially uh, things that will take care of the health care for our retired teachers, uh, some uh, 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 reduction in regulations for homeowners like uh, on, on annexation practices, uh, again mentioning uh, earlier cracking down on mail ballot uh, vote fraud uh, that's taken place in the state of Texas. Governor, as always, I appreciate your time, and uh, I'm sure we will uh, talk later, and we'll wait and see if we have another special session, and we'll wait and see uh, how even some conservatives uh, react to uh, maybe uh, news that uh, you have some, I guess, what, uh, House conservatives that are trying to find a new speaker. We'll see how that plays out, Governor. Well, most importantly, i got to tell you, these members need to hear from their constituents, from their voters. Uh, that'll be the one thing that makes the difference. All right. Governor, thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to the Chad HD Show on News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM KFYO. We'll take the break when we come back. Your comments on what the governor had to say.